Hey guys, I'm gonna do a video today on tips for going vegan. Number one is to educate yourself. Inform yourself so that you can know all the different reasons for going vegan. Because it definitely is a lifestyle, not just a diet. This helps you on your journey so that when others have questions for you, you're able to answer them in confidence. And it also helps tremendously in simply inspiring you and exciting you about this new lifestyle change. Check out Bite Size Vegan on YouTube. She has a video that covers almost every topic on veganism that you could possibly want to know information about. Cowspiracy on Netflix is about the environment. Earthlings on YouTube is about having compassion for the animals. Forks Over Knives is about eating a whole foods plant-based diet for optimal health and wellness. Adapt.org, which is Gary Urofsky's website, he's one of my favorite vegans out there, I just love him so much. There's a wealth of information in the All About Veganism section. I'm going to put all these links and more in the description box below so that you can use all those resources you can in ways to help inspire you. Plus I'll put some uh, book, book titles down there so that you know different aspects and different ways you can eat vegan like the starch solution or the 80-10-10 diet, eating a more raw fruit based way of eating um, and the Forks Over Knives books and that type of thing so that you can kind of gather what which type of vegan lifestyle is the most easy and accessible and idealistic and exciting for you. Number two is to eat enough calories. This is so, so important. If you aren't eating enough calories to sustain yourself, you're not gonna be feeling your best. You're gonna start craving those, you know, old habit die hard foods and your body's gonna be missing something. The more calories you eat from whole plant foods, the more nutrients you get in your body and the more satisfied you'll be. So it can be really helpful to track your calories on chronometer.com in the beginning. Plant foods in general are lower in calories than animal-based foods. So this means you need to eat more bites of food to be satisfied. Your plates need to be larger, and this can take some getting used to a bit, which is why tracking your calories on chronometer um, for a bit can be really helpful. Um, aim for at least 2,000 calories a day for women. Eat more if you desire. Eat until you're totally satisfied, like I said from the reasons before. I eat about 3,000 calories a day right now because I'm breastfeeding, I'm active with my children, and I also work out. But basically eat until you're totally satisfied and track your calories for a while to make sure you're getting enough calories. But number three tip is a good way to help you make sure that you get enough calories to make it easiest for you to get enough calories is to stock up on the essentials that are high calorie whole plant foods. Bananas, dates, mangoes, potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, rice, quinoa, lentils, beans, rice pasta. Um, these are just a few examples and also you know whole plant fats like avocado, hemp seeds, coconut, pumpkin seeds are also wonderful additions to your diet. Yeah by stocking up on these foods it'll be easier for you to be able to eat enough calories because you'll have these high calorie um, whole plant foods in your house in abundance. This makes it so much easier, simply just so much easier to have these ha these foods in the house in abundance for you. Pick the foods that you like the best. If you don't care for beans, you don't have to eat beans. If you love bananas, stock up on loads of bananas. Also, if you're inspired to eat more raw based, simply go at a pace that is comfortable and easy for you and check out my ebook, which is filled with 50 raw food recipes and 10 pages of health tips. Um, yeah, there's going vegan, there's there are so many different ways to eat vegan. Find what works for you and what type of vegan diet that you like. Start out with raw foods as your first meals of the day, like big smoothies for breakfast or you know a big handful of bananas, and make your cooked meals as your last meals of the day. This is best and optimal for digestion, to eat your fruits as your first meal of the day. The next tip is to clean out the junk. Those animal foods do not need to be in your house. Get them out of your house as soon as possible. If you live with someone who is um, not vegan and you'll be the only one making the transition, I would suggest to get a separate cabinet for you. Like, you know, all right, this is your cabinet of food and this is my cabinet of food. So that, so that every time you go to pick out food for a meal, you can open your cabinet and see only vegan food so you know your options and that way you're not tempted by the foods that you grew up on. Um, after a while, if you're eating enough calories to sustain yourself, you are not going to be tempted to eat those animal foods because the more you educate and inspire yourself, the less appealing those foods will become and the more they will just simply not look like food anymore. I can honestly say that animal foods to me are the equivalent of cardboard and like nails. Like they do not, they are simply not food for me. And the longer that you are vegan and the more you educate yourself and the more you're inspired by this lifestyle, 
the less those foods will actually look like foods to you. But in the beginning, it can be really helpful to separate your foods out from the other people in the house who are not eating vegan so that you can have a cabinet full of your own, your own vegan foods, all your favorite vegan foods to um, keep you excited about what you're eating and to not be tempted by the other foods as much as possible. That would be, I think, the easiest way I can think about it. The next tip is to find recipe, recipes to duplicate your favorite foods that you grew up on. Every single food you grew up on can be veganized. My favorite, rec my favorite um, recipe sources for you know duplicating like meals that you grew up on would be oshiglows.com or forksoverknives.com. Also, I have a blog post on my blog about my favorite cooked recipes, and also uh, Bonnie Rebecca, my friend Bonnie. She has, oh, she's so amazing. I love her so much. But she all and she also has a whole section on her front page of her YouTube channel. Scroll down to the last section where she has a what I ate in a day video and she has lots of different ideas for different foods that you might love in your transition to veganism and she can give you so many ideas um, for different vegan meals you can make. And veganism does not have to be complicated. You can make meals so simply. You do not have to go on to, oh, you know, to websites to find these like super complicated dishes on how to make vegan pizza and stuff. Like you so don't have to do that. You can seriously simply just pop some sweet potatoes in the oven or boil sweet potatoes, top it with some guacamole and some arugula and call it a meal. So good, so simple, and so satisfying. But for those times where you are having a hankering for those comfort foods that you grew up on, um, definitely those websites are a great resource. And for anybody else who's already vegan watching this, go ahead and put down your favorite vegan recipe, website, blog, cookbook, whatever, so that people, other people can get inspired. Um, yeah. So my next tip is to surround yourself with like-minded people, or at the very least, supportive people. People who don't support you in your efforts towards living a more compassionate and healthy lifestyle are not friends worth having, simply. Um, you can connect with new, with other vegans through Facebook, Instagram, or vegan meetup websites. There's a website called meetup.com slash topic slash vegan. And they have all these different web, or meet up, vegan meetups all around the world, so check that out for sure. I can honestly say that almost all my best friends are friends that I've met through Instagram. It's so true. I love you guys if you're watching. If you happen to have family members who are negative towards you, simply be the best example you can be for them. This is where informing yourself and educating yourself really comes into play um, because that way their negativity won't, let, won't get you down in your new lifestyle change. Don't let their negativity get you down because it's important to realize that others' negativity towards you is really just a projection of their own you know, insecurities and negativities on themselves. So just remind yourself that, you know? <laughs> the next thing is don't fret about mistakes along the way. My friend Kat Green once said about how her grandma always telling her that worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. You go back and you go forth and you go back and you go forth and you never get anywhere. And that's so true. Worrying and stress is so not productive. It's so not helpful for your body either. Um, yeah, so if you make any kind of mistake along the way, uh, just pick yourself back up and keep on moving. And the last tip is don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask questions along the way through people on Instagram or your other vegan friends once you meet up with them. Um, people that you're inspired by. Simply love yourself, love the animals, and love the planet. You got this. Yeah, I hope this helps. If you have any other questions, please put them in the comments below. I'll try to get to them, and maybe other vegans too who are already watching this will be able to answer other people's questions below. Bye! Do you like the way the cold floor feels? <laughs>